Hello everyone, I am Dr. Andaline and I will be talking to you about micro-teaching. Micro-teaching is a scaled down teaching wherein the teacher trainee breaks down the complete teaching process into smaller units. By doing so, the teacher trainee develops a lot of skills as well as confidence along with the corrections so that she can get a better output. Now, being a fresher and if you are asked to deliver a lesson at one stretch, it will be very challenging, very difficult and as a result it would even demotivate the teacher trainee. So therefore, the micro-teaching concept was introduced wherein the young teacher trainee is introduced to a scaled down teaching, meaning she would teach the unit in small bits so that she can take a break and in the process she will develop her skills. Now let us look at the steps in micro teaching. These are the steps in micro teaching. This is step number one. Step one where the teacher trainee has to plan. What is she going to plan? She's going to plan whether she's going to do a prose lesson or a poetry lesson or something in, in science, something in social science or math. It's up to her to first decide on the subject, then decide on the topic. For example, if she's going to do a lesson or a poem in English, if she's going to do the daffodils poem, she freezes on the subject, she freezes on the topic. So the topic is daffodils. Now what the teacher trainee should really do in this planning session is, she should sit down and pretend to be a child herself, first and foremost to understand from the level of a child. How can I teach about the poem Daffodil to a set of children? What are the type of activities I can, in, I can use? What are the types of questions? What are the types of pictures? How do I relate the daffodil to the student's life? So these type of basic questioning should come to the teacher's mind. She should have a notepad where she keeps writing down as she gets ideas. The teacher has to have a letter pad and keep no noting down whatever ideas come to her mind. Because the, this teaching process is going to be something precious and within those few minutes she has to deliver a beautiful concept about the daffodils. So in the planning process, the teacher works very systematically and designs as uh, the moment she enters the class, as what she, how she's going to greet her children. Is it going to be good morning children, God bless you or good morning little ones. You know, you can add your own tags right from the good morning up to the end of the session, what she's going to do. So she has to have a... A, a well-defined plan here. After the planning is done, and of course, you have to prepare the teaching aids as well. You go on to the second step, which is teaching, and this has to be done for six minutes. Six minutes is just a recommendation, How? because your the teacher trainee is a beginner, and if he's given a lot of time to do, that would result in a lot of embarrassment or fear. So we just, on six minutes, which is quite sufficient, for a trainee to develop the skill of teaching. Now there are various skills which I'll be teaching, which I'll be sharing with you in my next session. But right now we are looking at the skill of motivation. It is otherwise called the skill of introduction. Now in this phase, this, the time limit is six minutes wherein the teacher will teach the group of children and tell them about the concept. In my example, we would like to teach about the daffodils. So in this process, the, the children are just the peer group or the friends of the teacher trainee herself and there will be one teacher who will not engage in the activity but who, who would be sitting behind and observing the complete session which includes the reaction of the, of the students as well as the reaction of the teacher. The process starts where the teacher trainee delivers the concept and after six minutes the session comes to a close. The teacher trainee obtains uh, feedback from the teacher who was just engaged in observing as well as she collects the feedback from her peer group. And the teacher is also, the trainee is also uh, requested to engage in self-reflection. Did I teach well? Did I introduce the concept well? Did my students respond well? Uh, was the session useful to them? Did I contribute something valuable to the society? These kind of introspection should happen in the teacher's mind. So now, with all this, 
the feedback is developed feedback from the peer group feedback from the teacher observer peer uh, feedback from the teacher trainee herself so having these three feedback there is a lot of reflection that happens like for example the teacher might have been too fast the teacher might have been very cruel or you know would have been very angry to a particular student uh, or uh, very aggressive to a particular student's response or the teacher was not very audible or the teacher was overlapping concepts there could be any kind of negativity or any kind of comments that has come but the teacher trainee should not take this as a personal note but instead should choose to work on the valuable feedback so after obtaining the feedback the next work would be to replan the lesson now here they have recommending 12 minutes it's up to us to take a little extra time so that uh, you know we do not make the same mistakes over and over again so 12 minutes is recommended just as a formality so that we don't overdo ourselves or we don't do less now when you replan we have to keep the three feedback in mind and then replan the same lesson for the same set of audience so you can the teacher trainee can actually think when i asked this question the students were not excited should i change this question or when i did this activity the students were not willing to participate so should i change this the teacher has to work on her own uh, thought process so that helps her to replan the lesson and then we go to a con the next concept the next step which is called the reteach where the teacher teaches the same thing to the same set of audience where the same teacher is observing and after the complete uh, the unit is taught again re feedback is obtained now in the whole process of micro teaching this re feedback and the feedback are actually very very important because they actually give a map they give a guideline to the teacher trainee to understand where she stands in this particular teaching process because if she's got the feedback from this particular group at this stage and if she's getting the same feedback in the re feedback session it means that her process is not successful the negative feedbacks obtained here should be lesser seen here or not seen at all that is a sign of growth that is a sign that the teacher trainee is progressing to be a good teacher so in this two areas we should not take the comments to be very personal we should have a, the, the teacher trainee should have a broad mind and accept because somebody it's very rare these days where somebody could correct us where we could learn from our mistakes so we should not develop any ego on that but instead choose to work by balancing the recommendations or the feedback given by the peer group and the teacher observer herself so this is the cycle of micro teaching and this is helpful for teacher trainees and for teachers who have taken up teaching but do not have a teaching degree so by doing this micro teaching over and over again to smaller group of children or smaller group of teachers they can develop a lot of skills hello everyone let's start to replan the lesson and then we go to a the next concept the next step which is called the reteach where the teacher teaches the same thing to the same set of audience where the same teacher is observing and after hello the hello everyone uh, the now we are going to do the taught, fourth again re feedback is obtained now in the whole process of micro teaching this re hello everyone now we are going to do the fourth and skill the which is the skill of blackboard are actually now, very very now the skill important. of blackboard work is because very important they because in our classes 
we they will give have a guideline to, to the learn in different styles to understand like people who learn she through audio in this people who learn through video process. people who because learn by if she's viewing, got people who learn by, from by this you know by group, imagination at this stage we and if she's getting the same class, feedback in the, the traditional way of learning is the visual style that and in a class of maybe 60 children at least 35 the negative feedback would be visual learners should be lesser seen traditional way or not seen at all that is a sign of growth. That is a sign that the teacher trainee is progressing to be a good teacher. So in these two areas, we should not take the comments to be very personal. We should have a, the, the teacher trainee should have a broad mind and accept because somebody it's very rare these days where somebody could correct us, where we could learn from our mistakes. So we should not develop any ego on that, but instead choose to work by balancing the recommendations or the feedback given by the peer group and the teacher observer herself. So this is the cycle of micro teaching and this is helpful for teacher trainees and for teachers who have taken up teaching but do not have a teaching degree. So by doing this micro teaching over and over again to smaller group of children or smaller group of teachers, they can develop a lot of skills. Hello everyone, now we are going to do the fourth skill which is the skill of blackboard. Now the skill of blackboard work is very important because in our classes we will have people who learn in different styles like people who learn through audio, people who learn through video, people who learn by doing, people who learn by, by, you know, by imagination. We have different types of learners in our class but the traditional way of learning is the visual style. And in a class of maybe 60 children, at least 35 to 40 children would be visual learners because of our, our traditional way of learning. Now, the skill of blackboard is very important because it, uh, if the student fails to listen to you while you deliver something, the, the student will be able to catch up by watching whatever is written on the board. So while we teach, we should also engage in board work like simple drawings, writing down certain words, drawing a flow chart. All this will help actually to build visual memory in the child. Now looking at the first component, it, we should write very clearly distinct letters, meaning no overlapping, no, you know, uh, keeping your letters very congested. Uh, and your letters should be very visible for the child from the first row to the child seated at the last bench. While you write the first line on the board, and you can walk around your class to check if your children are you know, ready, if they have their pencils or pens ready, and if they are really writing. So while you walk around, you can go and take the position right at the, at the end of the class, and you can check whether your writing is straight, whether it's clear, or whether the font size is, is too small or too big. So that check you must make always when you do line one. Then you come back, so, teacher, so the student know teacher is walking around and I cannot be with without writing. So you, you come forward. Then uh, neatness. So when you write, when you have, they see the blackboard, children should feel very organized, very neat. So they would try to keep their, uh, you know, notebooks very neat. For example, on the corner of the board, you need to have the number present, number absent. On this corner, you will have the date written. In the center, you will have the name of the lesson, which you're particularly uh, doing on that day. And uh, of course, important words or important flow chart or little diagrams. And even when you draw, instead of, you know, just drawing and say, this is leaves, this is tree, without even writing, you just say and you, you, you keep rushing. So at the end of it, how does this look? Doesn't look like a figure at all. So instead, you write the word, this is a tree. While you explain, take, take a minute to write. So the children understand, okay, the teacher was in a hurry, but this she actually meant to draw a tree and you might have some people some children you know being a little naughty and say teacher doesn't know to draw a tree so we should accept all that with a smile so instead of rushing and drawing that so horribly draw it out neatly so which is like acceptable to the child all right and then the, the straight lines when especially when you're doing math when you're doing uh, concepts which dealing with angles 90 degrees 60 degree Take the effort to take the big geometry box, the wooden box to your classes, measure, draw. Just don't do freehand drawing. You do freehand drawing and you tell your child measure for 5 centimeter. 
measure 30 degrees. No, you have to replica, do what is required so the child is actually copying you. Children are like wet cement. The impression you, you give, that is, that is form, that is forever. We cannot undo that. Then, uh, what you can do is, instead of writing the same color, you can use variation. For certain aspects, you can use uh, red chalk. For certain, you can use blue. For certain, you can use green. Go with a nice creative concept of doing your board. And the last one is appropriate blackboard work. Example, continuity of ideas, drawing attention of the student in a systematic way. Now, let me give you the same example as the lesson which I was just explaining, Balu and the apple tree. The first sequence, the first sacrifice the tree made was the apple. The second sacrifice was the branch. This is the leaves. The, what was the third sacrifice? It was the stump. The, the, the next sacrifice was the roots. So this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. And who used all this? Balu. So it was Balu so erect when he, when he used the root? No. How was Balu? In this position he must have been like this because he took the branches and he built a house. Then Balu was little, little slightly old when he wanted to go and may go and see the world so he wanted to make a boat to go and enjoy himself and balu was very much very old bent up like our grandparents at home very bent very bent very small when he wanted to just rest his back so but now by seeing this diagram the child is able to, it looks a little puzzle but however the child is able to connect with the lines which i have drawn so very old he wanted this, when he was a little of a medium age he wanted the boat, when he was very young he wanted the branches and then when he was very small he wanted the apple. So you can ask the child to draw the concept in a different way, use colors, you yourself can actually color this with uh, red, color the, this with brown, that's how you make your blackboard a very interactive uh, kind of visual learning to your child. We shall go on to the next skill, which is a skill of classroom management. And the components are clarity of direction, call student by names, make norms of classroom behavior, check inappropriate behavior immediately. And the last one, keep students in eye span. So now, giving clarity of direction. You have to tell the child, stand up, come forward, write on the board, go back, sit down. So these little instructions will help the child to do the right movement. For example, you can even ask her to come forward, walk around the class and let me know who is not writing. So that's her direction. So she understands it's her job to walk around or maybe to imitate the teacher herself and come and report. Give clarity in direction. Next is call the student by name, not by roll number. In the morning when you take attendance or even during the day when you want to call, you cannot say A number 61. No. Learn to uh, learn the child's name or you can actually club the common names like Madhumita, Vishnu, Bala. These are all the common names. You find out how many Balas, how many, how many children have the same name with different initials. So that's one easy way of learning your child. Next is you can have the children seated in rows and you do the row rotation. So for one week this row sits in front. Then the next week, this row goes at the back. The, the second row comes in front. Like this, you do a row rotation. And when you do the row rotation, you give a leader for the row. So first you learn the leader's names. So under uh, the first girl, Pooja. So under Pooja, we have so many, so many girls. Under the next second bench, Vishwa sitting. Under Vishna, Vishwa, Vishwa's leadership, we have certain students. So this is how you try to learn the names of the student. If you don't know the name of the student, please feel free to ask her. What's your name? And then you address the child by the name. Say, Priya, you were talking. I don't want you to talk anymore. Please sit down and do your work. So when you address, she feels very personalized. And then looking at the third component, making norms of classroom behavior. When they know it's Miss Andeline's class, my children know what they should be doing. If I'm late for class, if uh, when the subject, the previous subject teacher walks out and if I'm not there on time, my class is supposed to stand up and recite the poems. All the poems which we have done so far. 
they have to stand up and recite. And I will have the class captain who will be in my place, who will pretend to be me, and she would write the names of those who are not ready to recite. So after the recitation is done, mostly I will come, but in case I am yet held up, the next thing is to take the, the lesson which I taught them recently and find uh, you know, words, difficult words, and frame sentences on their own. This they are supposed to do using their dictionary. So these are the two activities. So you have to set a, a pattern, a behavior. If it is this teacher's class, I am expected to do this. This registry you should give your child. And then the, if it's a math, I even teach math. If it's a math class, they have to stand up and recite their tables. Likewise, according to your subject, you can decide what behavior is expected. Then is check inappropriate behavior immediately. You take your children to the, to the lab. They are watching some uh, movie or, or some kind of fairy tale. There's some misbehavior. You cannot just leave it there and come to the class and maybe after a week you tell her, even that day in the lab, you behaved like this. No. You call them immediately. Check them for bad behavior. And these days with so much of, you know, mental tension with children, Call them aside immediately and tell them in the most polite way. This is not expected of you. I thought you're a very good girl. I still think you're a good girl. You should change. So that behavior correction should be done immediately. The next is keep students in eye span. Whether you like it or not, you have to keep moving your eyes from the first bench right up to the last bench. Look at every child. Make sure that every child looks in your face. The child that refuses to look, the child that avoids eye contact, as a problem. You have to segregate, call her out and speak. You can find this poor eye contact when you ask a question and when the child refuses to look into your face, you know that she doesn't know the answer. That is one technique for you. Now it's up to you whether you still want to pull up that child for an answer or you want to call her aside and tell her when I asked this question, you were not looking at me. Did you know the answer? You can have a conversation. So your eye connect is very, very important and teach your child also to look into the eye of the other person. If somebody is misbehaving with her or if somebody is looking at her in the wrong way, ask her to have the courage to look into his eyes. Look into his eyes and tell him whatever she's supposed to tell. So eye contact is very, very important. So I think these are the skills for classroom management. I hope you uh, follow some of them at least. Hello everybody, now let us go on to the second skill, which is the skill of explanation. I have actually written the, the components of the skill of explanation. Now the first component is beginning statement. Now after the motivation, the next step, the second step is the skill of explanation. So when you begin to explain, you cannot say, now I am going to explain about so and so. Instead of saying that, you can say, let us now go in go into this lesson and try to understand what the author is trying to say. Now, this kind of a statement can, can be said if you are doing a prose lesson or even a kind of a story type, even if it's going to be non-detail or something like that, or even a moral story session. Uh, but if it's going to be prose, now let us all enjoy reading this poetry. So this type of little, uh, little phrases or little sentences at the beginning would be the beginning statement. And, uh, when we do the skill of explanation, we should have clarity. Now, let me uh, continue with the same example. The lesson is Balu and the apple tree. This is normally done for grade 3 or grade 4. This, this is a prose lesson. So, how am I going to give the beginning statement? I will tell them that, I will ask them to close all their books and then I will ask them to sit down in a very relaxed mode because we are going to have, we are going to have story time. And so that itself would, you know, gear them up where they'll put their pencil boxes, their books all aside and they will sit down to listen to my story. And when I start the story, 
I may involve a child. I will call the child forward and give him a character. In this particular example, I will name the child Balu. I will call another student forward and name him the tree. Because in this lesson, we have just two people. One is Balu and one is the tree. The, for this, I, should, I as a teacher should have studied the lesson, should have understood every concept. Only then, I can really do this as a, as a perfect role model in front of my children. So I will have a student who is Balu, one student as a tree. And as I read and, or as I narrate, I will ask these two people to act according to this. Hello everybody. Now let us go on to the second skill, which is the skill of explanation. I have actually written the, the components of the skill of explanation. Now the first component is beginning statement. Now, after the motivation, the next step, the second step is the skill of explanation. So, when you begin to explain, you cannot say, now I am going to explain about so and so. Instead of saying that, you can say, hello everybody, now let us go on to the second skill, which is the skill of explanation. I have actually written the, the components of the skill of explanation. Now, the first component is beginning statement. Now, after the motivation, Balu, one student as a tree. And as I read and or as I narrate, I will ask these two people to act according to the statements. So now what is happening? I am stimulating my children to watch and to listen. Of course, the teacher needs to have fluency. In case the fluency is missing, the enthusiasm is lost. So when we prepare for the skill of explanation, Maybe if you are not very well versed in English, you can write out your script and decide what statement you are going to make at, uh, during the process of explanation. Use of linked words. This is very important because sometimes when we speak continuously, we are lost in thought what to say next. So link words like however, because, since, uh, later on. These type of words will bring in a tone of narration to the listener. Then you go on for planned repetition. While you explain, you, now in this lesson, I want to emphasize that the tree was extremely very generous. So, I want to build in the, the quality of generosity in my children. So, I would re intentionally keep repeating, the tree was very generous. The tree gave away its apples. Now, let me tell you the story. We, there was a small boy just like you and his name was, his name was Balu. I was telling you just now, his name was Balu. This boy was very playful. He had a few friends, but he chose the tree to be his friend. Now, this story is based on imagination because uh, do trees talk to us? No, they don't. So, this story is based on pure imagination. Can you imagine a tortoise talking to you? Yes. But will the tortoise really talk to you? Not at all. So this is an example where the, where the writer of the story just imagines and develop, uh, develop this particular story. Now Balu is a small boy where he used to come to engage himself to play along with the tree. So while playing, uh, the tree and Balu, they have small conversations. The boy then starts going to school. And when he comes back from school, he does not have toys because his parents did not buy toys. So he comes with a complaint to his friend. You know, you have friends who are ready to help you when you need. So he comes and tells his friend, I need to buy some toys and I do not have money. So the tree tells him, you can take away all my apples, go sell it in the market and you will get money. With that, you can buy toys. So Balu takes the apples, goes to the market sells it, gets money, buys his toy. And with that, he doesn't come back to the tree. Then Balu grows a little more big. And he now comes to him saying that, I, I, I need some more help because now I am big and I need more support from you. So the tree now decides, uh, it starts thinking, what kind of support can I give? Uh, but I like Balu. He's my best friend. I should help him out. So the story goes on like this. Now, coming back to the teacher trainee, what you can do is, you can have a child here who will, uh, who will pretend to be the tree, keep his hands up, or if you don't want to use uh, the child keeping his hands up to pretend like a tree, you can draw a chart, you can draw a tree on a chart, 
with apples which can be removable so the first the first episode where balu is plucking the apple you can really uh, pull out the apple if you use some sticker and stick it the picture of the apple can be just uh, withdrawn and given to balu so then balu really goes to the market we can create the market scene where balu is selling the apples and we can you know bring in the usage of math where he sells 1 kilo of apple for 60 rupees and then he gets that 60 rupees and goes to the toy shop so we can really create a lovely scene while we do this explanation so then uh, coming back to the story balu comes again to the tree and asks him for help and the tree decides to give his branches because he would like to like to uh, build a house so likewise the uh, balu comes to the tree at various situations and utilizes the tree completely the first time he came was he said he wants to buy toys the tree gave its apples the second time he came and said he needs to build a house so the tree decided to give its branches so in case you're using a child to stand like this as the branches so one branch is cut off other branch is cut off so only the tree is there now so what happened to the branches he's built a house for himself and many years later he doesn't come back many years passed by and he doesn't come after that when he's little old he comes back to the tree and now only the stump is left there's no fruits there's no leaves there's no branch only the stump is there and if you're using a chart you can use the you know the velcro where you can remove the branches so only the only the the the, the trunk of the tree remains on your chart now again he comes to the tree and the tree is so happy to see balu after so many years and says come balu let's engage in playing let's engage in talking and then again balu says no i'm too uh, you know old to sit down and talk with you because you yourself are gone very old i need a boat where i can go to different places and enjoy myself so then the tree decides to give away its trunk so the trunk also is cut off now the trunk is cut off and what's remaining only the roots only the roots have you seen trees like this so the children will answer yes yes where did you see how many trees what do you think of it do you think there's a story behind those trees if you bring interaction among the children coming back to our lesson so the tree decides to give away its trunk uh, its trunk and balu goes makes a boat he goes all over the place goes boating enjoys himself and now it's time for him to become very 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 old you know we have our grandparents we have our great grandparents how do they walk like this some of them walk like this some of them are even more bent right they got very old so balu also became very old now wait a minute do we all grow old yes even when you come back after you become a big girl or a big boy i will be old later on you all also become old so this is the process of life coming back to our story balu is now very old and he comes to his tree and even now the tree friend says come balu you are my friend what can i do for you why are you so sad so then balu tells him oh no i need some rest i am very tired i need i need to you know rest my body on something so then the tree offers its root as a support so balu goes there and sits down and stretches his legs two legs right you know and and uh, slants his head on the on the tree i should have actually drawn this a little closer maybe this way where he rests his head on the and you know sit down with his legs so what happened to the story the tree has been an a very generous friend it has been very supportive to balu whether balu did good to it or not whether balu spent time with him or not the tree completely gave up itself for friendship generosity is very important so likewise children are you going to be generous when you grow big the children may tell you yes or no pull up some questions ask them what kind of generosity are you going to do or uh, or you can even bring out the concept of saving trees so this is how you you know you go about the skill of explanation stimulating questions i just did this concept to you and then the concluding statements the concluding statement is you can wind up by saying that the tree was extremely kind so kindness is close to per, kindness is something very pure it's actually close to god 
God's act, God is always very kind to us. So you can connect it to a godly uh, aspect. So I think uh, this uh, example should be helpful to you. Thank you. Hello everyone. Now I'm going to tell you about the skill of introduction. It is also called the skill of motivation. Now among the eight skills, this skill is the most important one because this is actually the opening, the opening of a particular concept or a particular lesson or a particular unit. Now when this skill is not, doesn't go well, the teaching, the continuation of the lesson may not go well. So it is very important to master the skill. Now we have some components which come under the, the skill of introduction. We have greeting, where you walk into the class with a smile, you know, looking forward to some energy some, or giving some positive energy to your children. Good morning, everybody. How are you? And hello. If not, you just stand by the, by the entrance of the door and give them a clap or give them a smile. So this can be a different type of greeting. Or you can just walk into the class by clapping your hands and say, you are all so beautiful. So that will stimulate the children as to say, what is the teacher saying? This is something different. We never hear teachers saying this. So the, your greeting can be creatively designed by you. And then you go on to the next one where you arose curiosity. You, you don't go up to the class and just write the name of the lesson and just, just tell the children, today we are going to do this lesson. No. You start, try to instill some curiosity. Make them wonder which lesson is teacher going to teach us now? What is it going to be about? So for this, you need to ask children some questions or you call them forward you know, to participate in an activity. You, you can also ask them to close their eyes and imagine something of whichever they like. For example, uh, if I have to do a lesson on Balu and the apple tree, how would I actually arouse curiosity in my children? I will ask them to close their eyes and think of their friend, all their friends. Then I would take the next question and tell them to think of their best friend. And after they have visualized, I will ask them to open their eyes. I will not ask them to reveal who the person is, but I will ask them to keep in mind their best friend. Then I will ask some children randomly to stand up and tell me why they like that particular friend uh, or among all friends why they have chosen one particular friend. So based on those values which those children tell me, for example, they may tell me my, my friend loves me a lot, my friend always helps me, my friend is always there to support me. My friend spends time with me. My friend gives me chocolates. My friend gives me uh, new, new story books. My, my friend invites me to her parties. They will come up with variety of answers. And then I will not ask the same child these questions. I will be pulling up children at random and preferably people who are at the back, if they are not very participative, I will pull them up with such kind of interaction. So this is how I will arouse curiosity for this particular lesson. Then revival of previous knowledge. So how will I connect my present topic to the already existing knowledge of the children? They already know who a friend is and who a best friend is. So based on that previous knowledge, I have actually arose curiosity in my children. I will tell them just as how you have a friend, you have a very dear friend, a best friend. Today we are going to learn about a boy and his best friend. So now they would be thinking it's going to be a human just as how they have their own friends at their same age, age group or probably the same gender too. But now I will go on next to tell them uh, by introducing the objective. I will not tell my children I'm introducing the objective. No, that will be in my mind. But my objective is to deliver the concept of friendship. And friendship could reach, uh, could, could uh, connect between people of any age group, any gender. And friendship could also be between uh, the trees, the trees, the animals, the birds. So this is the concept which I will try to bring out through the objective of my lesson. And in this lesson, I will all, through the objective concept, I will also tell them 
where kindness is very important, where we learn to help each other. And I will also touch upon the concept of how parents spend a lot of time, money, uh, a lot of uh, energy preparing, keeping us healthy. So they are also our friends in some way because they support us. So this is how I will deliver the objective. So once again, let me give you a recap on the skill of introduction. You will, the first thing is to greet your children with a smile, most important. The second is arose curiosity. After you arose curiosity, then you build your questions based on your previous knowledge. Then you deliver the objective. Tell them why we are going to do a lesson. And after you deliver the objective, you tell them, okay, now let's, lo let's look at the name of the lesson. And then you write the name of the lesson on the blackboard.